Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 131, Don't Be Groomed. Episode over. Uh, not quite. So yes, we are back with episode 131 and we are, this is an episode that we promised a while back when we we're going to talk about grooming, but instead of like positioning this one toward parents, we're going to talk mainly toward uh, young people, um, you know, grooming tactics and all that kind of stuff, because apparently this thing is becoming more and more apparent and more and more. I looked up something. And from like 2018 to 2022, it was like an 80 percent rate of grooming, like 80% just increase, increase of yeah. grooming. From kids. what years? 2018 to 2022. That's not including That's this not year. Very long. No, it's not. Yeah, it's and so in four years, years it almost doubled. Right. It's an 80 percent increase. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean that, that's crazy. In four years, that that and a lot and of that's I not think, including this year when we've already had like. I don't know, a bunch. Yeah, but that's just in our area. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it might be helpful for us to kind of address the outline of how we're going to approach the subject. So if parents only want to show their kids from certain age ranges a portion of the podcast, they could, it it might be helpful for them to understand how it's lined up. Okay. Someone who knows more about how it's lined up should probably (laughs) do that part. (laughs) You know, she said that. I thought that means she, she was, was going. Prepared. I thought she was going <laughs> to no, do that. I yeah. would also like to know how this is going to be like. <laughs> well, we're going to look at things uh, in different sections here, but really kind of talk about trafficking a little bit of understanding that, get a better understanding and explanation of that, and then you know maybe what to look for uh, with traffickers, how you know who they can be, all this kind of stuff. And then we're going to talk about, uh, I know it's, it's going to be Kylie's favorite part mm-hmm. of this one, is the technology. And I think that's one of the reasons that we've seen such a boom in, the, in that four years period, because technology has been utilized mm-hmm. so, so well in grooming. And such y- m- younger age ranges as well. Yes. They're starting yes. earlier. And then uh, we look at some of the tactics and then, you know, how we can respond to grooming are trafficking and different things like that. Yeah. All right. Does that suffice? Yes. Awesome. Okay. We've made Jada happy now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so kind of our, because this is a different kind of episode, kind of a special kind of episode, it is ad-free. It is story-free. It is just going straight into the meat of this. Because, number one, I would like to ask this. Why, why is everyone at this table very passionate about this subject? Because we care. <laughs> I mean, we care about kids. We care about yeah. protecting them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, and it's just one of those things that they have no idea what they're, what's being done. Yeah. And yeah. what they could get themselves into. Yeah. yeah. Partially because of my worldview, I place a tremendous value on life in general. Mm-hmm. Yes. And especially human life. And just the fact that things that I believe to be human rights, um, right to live, um, like right to freedoms. Um, I think that's why part of why I'm so passionate about this because every bit of this and every bit of what traffickers and groomers try to do is take away uh, the rights of living people. Mm. Yeah. One reason that I um, am really passionate about it is I was once where I'd I thought it only happened in movies, cannot happen in real life. And then whenever you started going through the abduction prevention type stuff, I started to realize, oh, crap, this actually happens. Yeah. (laughs) So I was once that kid, too. And I just want um, other kids to know about this stuff because it is really important. And I hate seeing on the news this kid that is now missing because of groomed online or just groomed. Yeah. And I would like to say that any of you who haven't felt like they've heard very much from Kylie recently, you are about to get a full dose of everything Kylie has to say about this subject. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, she was, uh, this is this is one of those things that she is very, very passionate about. Yep. Uh, but we all are. And, and in all honesty, you know, if this is, 
if this is that key point for our business, I'm perfectly okay with that. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, human trafficking is probably one of the worst things that happens in this world. Um, and I just, I have such a hatred for it, to be completely honest with you. It truly is modern day slavery. That's what, and it, it happens on every single continent in every single country. And it is in our country, it's happening. There are cases in all 50 states, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So for a lot of people, like Kylie was saying, who believe that like, it's just, uh, it's not really a thing that actually really happens. It doesn't happen in reality. Or it happens far off. It happens somewhere else. It happens in foreign countries. It happens in other states. No, it's happening close to where you are more than likely. And it is increasing at a rapid rate. Obviously. I mean, from Kylie's statistic that it is, that is the truth. (laughs) All right. So what, like, did everybody do the research? I mainly did it on. Uh, we online. all know you did. Don't worry. Yeah. About. <laughs> I have about ten points I'm going to cover, and some tips as well. So, Kylie, come. This is probably the most prepared Kylie has ever come to a podcast. Most prepared I've ever been. So, my plan right. is to let the girl talk and comment on things <laughs> every now and then. <laughs> Because I, I really believe that uh, hearing her say something is going to impact the the children that are listening to portions of this um, and the other people listening to this more than anything because true. she is at a targeted age. She really is, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, okay, so first off, like what are traffickers, what, what types of different trafficking are there? <laughs> okay, um, some of the... Uh, I guess lesser talked about ones are uh, labor trafficking. Um, uh, even though that's one of the top two. I it mean, is, it's, but it's, it's not as heavily mm-hmm. talked about. Mm-hmm. But labor trafficking is a major problem. Do mm-hmm. um, you want to give one, Gentry? Well, obviously sex trafficking. Yeah, yep. and that's the mm-hmm. one everybody mm-hmm. talks about. But, but, the but labor, those are the top two. But the labor trafficking, I am surprised by. Yeah, I didn't realize how big that mm-hmm. was, really. Something yeah. that I put on here was that it can be either male or female, or that it can be adults or We're teenagers. not talking about traffickers yet. We're talking about types of trafficking. Uh, she is just... I'm like, just raring to go. Raring she to is go. Rare. <laughs> you know, but another one, and it's not quite as big as the others, mm-hmm. is organ harvesting. That uh-huh. is... That is shocking that that is a thing, but that is I remember a thing too. the exact feeling that I experienced when I discovered that organ trafficking was a thing. Mm-hmm. I, I think I was probably about 13 when I found out that that was a thing, and it was horrifying. Yeah. Yep. That is it's just crazy. Um, again, you know, you're by far and away the most, I hate to use the word popular. Most prevalent. Most prevalent. Thank you. That's the you're word welcome. I was looking for. Would be sex trafficking and labor trafficking. That's mm-hmm. kind of the, your two that you're mainly looking at. And they say those two are the ones that you will find in every state. In every country, mm-hmm. everywhere. All right, now traffickers. Okay. Who could be traffickers, Kylie? It can be male or female, and either adults or sadly teenagers, like um, older teenagers or even high schoolers, even. Yeah. Which is very sad because I am a high schooler, and yeah. knowing that just breaks my heart. Yeah. They can be business owners. Friends of the family, authority figures, neighbors, or strangers, or sadly, family members. So basically, anyone can be a human trafficker. Yes. Yep. Nobody is safe. Yeah, I know. So there was one particular story that I had heard about where um, an interview of a, a lady who had been trafficked, and she was talking about how she was at a bar, and you know she was there by herself, and she meets up, she starts talking to these two other ladies, and she thinks everything's cool because there's two other ladies. And when it ended up, they slipped something in her drink, and she woke up in a van, and this was in Miami. And she was she spent, I think, three or four years in human sex trafficking where she was being pimped out. And it was terrible, terrible. And But, you know, she was talking about, you know, I thought just because they were other women in a mm-hmm. bar, I thought I could trust them. Mm-hmm. And they were all a part of that ring. It's crazy. So basically, if anybody can be a trafficker, how exactly do you identify one? That, that would be the hard part, but a lot of that is judging them by the way they 
operate and the way they do. I, I think one big thing is if somebody is trying to separate you from your family, for one thing, mm-hmm. if they kind of mm-hmm. try to put you on the opposite side of your family, like emotionally, I'm not even talking about physically necessarily. If they're trying to always say like, Oh man, that is so rough. What your parents, Kylie So that is so horrible. What your parents are doing to you, Kylie. I can't believe they are so mean to you. They just don't understand you like I do. Exactly. It creates an emotional attachment to that person to where they're, oh, they're on my side. Mm -hmm. They understand me. Yeah. And they are not afraid to take the time to invest into a relationship. That Mm -hmm. is true. And we've seen that like recently. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the real danger is, um, and I know we talk about parenting all the time, but don't let a human trafficker be willing to invest more time in your kids than you do. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But this one is toward the kids. But. Yes. <laughs> so I parents know. that are listening along, that's a very good tip. But like, you know, so if you're, if you're a kid and you, you, there's this adult who is talking to you, whether you know them or not, and, and their whole goal seems to be trying to angle you against your, your parents. Well, it doesn't even completely feel like that at the time. It won't feel like that at the time. What's going to happen is um, whenever you have normal family spats, things like that, um, where you feel like your parents just don't understand your point of view and you're just venting to a friend that you have. um, Guys, just don't super trust anybody who takes your side in everything. Yeah. It feels good to have your side taken, but it's not always the yes, best Yes, and it's yeah. going to feel reasonable, but you've got to take and separate yourself from the situation a little bit and think, is it really appropriate for somebody else in my life to disagree with everything my parents say? Yeah. Believe it or not, we as parents, we love our children <laughs> and we want what's best for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. I think one of the trickiest ones to navigate is uh, when it actually is a family member that is yes. that one's hard. That is soliciting the trafficking. Yes. Yeah. That is one of the most difficult situations to yeah. overcome. Yeah. It really comes from an understanding of yourself, your dignity, what is and is not appropriate. Um, and just having having respect for yourself and uh, the things that are yours, it really does help you weed out a little bit of the trafficking instances mm-hmm. that can take place. I think in, in a situation, and you're talking to someone, and they start to, maybe they've befriended you, maybe they, I mean, this could be a family member or anybody, mm-hmm. they've really befriended you, they've really done all these things, they really take your side a lot, they do all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, they start to make any kind of inappropriate request. That is that moment where you have to make sure that you say something to someone that you trust, some type of adult that you trust. Because in those situations, that is a warning sign. Mm-hmm. And it may, you may be overreaching a little bit you may it may not be what you think it is but you need another adult to understand what's going on first but if at any point it made you even feel slightly uncomfortable then it's a problem it is yeah. yes so yeah so not being afraid to go ahead and take that step and talk to somebody yeah. else about it you're not really overstepping at that point because you yeah. did feel uncomfortable yeah yes and it's it's a matter of understanding that no amount of what they've done for you uh, warrants them asking you to overstep a boundary. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's true. Um, y- you don't you don't owe them so much that you overstep personal boundaries. Yeah, no. Yep, very true. So th- those are things you just need to make sure that you have some people, uh, adults that you trust, mm-hmm. fully trust, and multiple, and per- preferably um, adults that your parents trust. Yes. Yes. Yep. And that you can talk to your parents. You can talk to other adults that you Please trust. Please talk to your parents. Yeah. So I just just be sure. It don't Communication is the key in a lot of these things. So when you cut off communication with trusted adults and trusted people, that is never a good thing. Never. All right. So moving on just a little bit, I think it was one of the biggest things and the biggest reasons that we've seen an almost doubled uh, grooming move up, you know, about 80% in four years is the expansion of technology 
yes. and different things. Yeah, and before you write us off completely for everything we say at this point, we're not saying technology is a bad thing. Oh, gosh, no. I use technology yeah. every single day of my life. But technology can be used in bad ways, yeah. and that's what we're talking about. So, all right. I know Kylie did a lot of research. So yeah. I'm going to let her start talking, and then we will just chime in when need <laughs> Okay, so first off, I have some statistics. That word. Statistics. 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 Um, of some of the apps that um, groomers use. Mm -hmm. Words. Um, the biggest percentage of the one that I found was Facebook and Facebook Messenger was like yeah. up at like 30%. Yeah. And then the following one was Snapchat, which was like 18%. And then the next one was Instagram, which is at 14%. And then others include WhatsApp, that's like at the very, about like 3%. Um, gaming, which is also almost to 4%. Um, I realize I'm working my way up, but that's just... You're all over the place. I'm over, right. all over the place. Just, you know, you're saying things that, apps that need to be addressed. So go ahead. Yeah. Um, text message is at almost 7%. Um, others is at sixteen percent. Okay. So just other different ways. There's all yeah. kinds of things out there. And uh, I think the big thing was that predators are using the same apps that everybody else is. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what I put on here. <laughs> I put bad people use the same apps as you. Yeah. That we do. We all use. And I think uh, there was even a case where, you know, and, and Kylie talked about you know, her basic, her biggest social media is the Bible app. Um, Bible app and Pinterest. Pinterest yeah. may be the biggest one so for me. People have even used the Bible app because there is a social function to it mm. for grooming. And that is scary, too. It is. And one well, of the things I mean, I told everybody her, can get it on their phone. Yeah, you know, it know. doesn't it doesn't matter if you actually believe what's in there. I know. <laughs> but the one thing I told her in that situation was just like, OK, when you have friend requests, because you get friend requests on the Bible app. When you get friend requests, make sure it's people that you actually know mm -hmm. and that we are okay with, mm -hmm. you know? And then you still monitor everything they say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other than that, uh, the things people don't think about, one of the things that has come up recently in near our area is grooming small children on apps like Roblox. Yeah. Um. Well, I think that would fall under the online gaming stuff. Yeah, it online would, but it stuff. needs to be addressed because that's one of that's one of the ways I most commonly hear people bring up to me where creepy things have happened, mm. uh, and it's probably just because of my close proximity to families and yeah, yeah, parents of younger kids. But this one particular instance, this four year old playing Roblox, uh, gets asked where they live mm. and it's by an adult gamer <laughs> yeah you know and she actually came up to her parents and was asking where what the address was so she could send it mm. yeah that, that sickens me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so the first point that i have on here is be careful who you friend on social media be sure that is a person that you know or not always what who your parents know but who your parents are okay with you friending. And it's a flag if there's an adult trying to send friend requests to children. It's, yes. That's a flag. You know, don't it, and it can be innocent, but it's yeah, still not something It's that still not it's appropriate. Just, no, it's not appropriate. Yes. Also, another thing, check your privacy settings on the social media app. Yeah. Because not everyone needs to see some of the stuff that you do. <laughs> I mean, it needs to be... Okay, so I think what you were trying I mean, to say yeah. is, number one, you should you should never post anything that you don't believe yeah, it's okay right. for the entire world to see. But yes. number two, you still need to get your privacy settings set in such a way where only your friends and only certain people can see it. You don't need the entire, it doesn't need to be open for the entire world to be able to yeah. see. Yeah, because once a picture is on there, it's on there for all the world to see. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, now another one that I have is bad people use fake pictures to make them appear younger than they actually are. Mm -hmm. 
So again, whenever you see that friend request of what it looks like to be a young girl around your age, go to your parents first. Yeah. Because your parents have your best interest at heart yeah. and they love you. They care about you and they don't want to lose you. Yeah. I think something I've seen recently as well, and this was more geared toward adults, um, and especially in our area, I don't know if y'all have seen this, but like on Facebook or something like that, I have seen where people have, they've used pictures of somebody in a military uniform and then start mm -hmm. sending them messages or making comments to somebody else. And the reason I see it, because we've talked about, I don't really get on social media, but we do have the our, our business page. And somebody will leave a comment on our business page or somebody will leave a review about our business. And then somebody will comment under their review and say, and, and I have a picture of a, you know, somebody in uniform and say, oh, you know, I, I've, I've looked at your stuff. You know, I, I really admire what you're doing, blah, 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 blah. Not talking to us, talking to people who made the review. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I've been trying to friend request you. Could you please send me a friend request? And they do this kind of stuff. And it could be all kinds of reasons why, but it's just, don't, I don't care if you're an adult. Don't, don't friend somebody you don't actually know. Yeah, and an important thing to note is you don't need your parents' permission to not friend somebody. Mm -hmm. So if there's doubt in your mind, maybe just don't. Yeah. Follow your gut. Yeah. If you have a gut feeling that something is wrong, follow it. Yeah. Um, and next point that I have is only get apps that your parents approve of. Don't just get an app because your friend Sally says um <laughs> says um that the app is fun and it's safe go to your parents first because they love you and quite frankly they've been on this earth longer than you have <laughs> i feel like your dad's staring a hole through you at the moment i, I mean i know, you know <laughs> I, I feel like you have you, you you got in trouble for something like that didn't you i did get in trouble yeah. for something and like if you that. notice the uh the app that you mentioned, wasn't it on the list of apps that it you read was. off? Yeah. Which is why I don't want it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe public shaming is not the best <laughs> tactic no, here. No, I wasn't going for public shaming. In, in all honesty, I wasn't going for public shaming. We've all made, I've made stupid mistakes, okay? I've done much much more dumb things than she ever has, and I hope to keep it that way. But, like, in, in all honesty, you know, everybody's going to make mistakes, mm -hmm. you know, on these things, so... As the great song once said. No. <laughs> Sorry. Also, another thing, don't turn on locations on a social media app because bad people can use that to their advantage and do something completely wrong to you or your loved ones. Yeah, you generally want to actually turn location settings off, off. because they're on by default in most social media things. So you want to turn location settings off. Mm -hmm. So when you post a picture of whatever inside your house, you don't want somebody to know exactly where you live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, another thing, don't allow mic on social media apps. Don't turn on your mic. Um, okay, again. for a second, I thought you were talking about some dude named Mike. Yeah. No, <laughs> what's the dude Mike <laughs> hey, If there's a guy named Mike and he's trying to friend request you, turn just no. <laughs> <laughs> it's another way that bad people can use it to their advantage and harm you. Again, again, it's another one of those things where you, it's by default, it's on in most cases, and you need to actually turn that off. Um, another thing is don't arrange to meet someone that you met online in person, unless your parents say it's okay. And, I mean, that doesn't even just go for people you don't know. Yeah. Just don't meet anybody without your parents' permission in the <laughs> first place. True. That's true, too. Yeah, especially like that. I don't know how many times... J.D., you and I watched when we were doing um, some, originally when we were doing some abduction prevention stuff. It amazes me how many people are willing to just meet people that they met online. Teenagers. We were looking at a lot of teenagers and kids stuff, but like adults and everything. Just, just like, oh, okay, cool. I'll just go meet this person online and come to find out they're nowhere near the person that they said they were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And part of that, too, is... I've met some people that say, oh, well, it's okay because I've video chatted with the person before, so I know they look exactly like their picture and everything. Yeah. Just because they look like their picture doesn't mean, one, that they're the age that they say, or two, that even if they are the age that they say, it doesn't mean they're trustworthy. Yeah. Yeah. They may still be a piece of trash person. Yeah. 
and look perfectly decent. Yep. Trashy people uh, look nice, too, sometimes. Mm. Mm-hmm. And it's not just trashy, you know, people looking nice. You also have to think about, um, you mentioned when we were talking about different people that would be traffickers. It can mm-hmm. be anybody. Yeah. It can be somebody in a position of authority or a mm-hmm. position. It can be a pastor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's terrible to say, but mm-hmm. it can it can be. So just because that person has a job title or something that would make you think that they have integrity, that they're a safe person, you still have to be careful about that. Now, we, we don't want to also scare somebody, like, you know, make somebody mm-hmm. go like, oh, crap, I can't trust anybody. I'm scared to death. And right. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Understand that uh, the majority of people, uh, in most cases, are, you know, okay people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but... You also have people that are like police officers, pastors, different things like that. Even a higher majority of people mm-hmm. in positions like that mm-hmm. are, are tr- decent and trustworthy people. Right. Okay. So I don't, we don't want people running around being scared to death of everything. Just understand that until you truly, truly know the person, you don't mm-hmm. truly, truly know the person. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the last point that I have, I'm not to the tips yet, so... <laughs> Um, now the last point that I have is while on vacation, wait to post until you're at home. Yes. If you post while you're there on vacation, that lets people know that you're not at home and they could potentially rob your house or worse. Yeah. So I know, uh, Kylie and, uh, she, she got, she got a bit of a, a little bit of a, um, a following on TikTok for posting things about self-defense and everything. And there was some little girl that just loved her to death and thought she was the biggest, coolest thing ever. And we were, I think we had gotten on there because she had made some type of comment wanting to see, basically wanted Kylie to respond to her. And when we went on there, we looked, and she was making a lot of the mistakes that Kylie's talking about right now in the fact that she told some random person on TikTok and posted it for the world to see where she was on vacation, what hotel she was staying at, when she was coming home, all kinds of stuff. And it was just super scary what we ended up learning about her in less than five minutes, all because she was just willing to share with everyone. Yeah. uh, It's not just on your vacations, though. A lot of people just post a meal that they're having when they're out in public or post a picture with their friends beside some kind of location Mm -hmm. showing sign, anything along those lines reveals your location to someone else, tells them that you are not at home or tells them if you're actually closer to them than you were before. Yeah. And teaches them about your habits. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's a, that's a huge thing because people can follow and figure out your habits by social media. Then it's going to be easier to, you know, victimize you in some way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now here are some tips. Look out for ways that bad people use to you to meet them without your parents' knowledge. Well, I think that actually is bringing us into our next subject and talking about some of the tactics that people use. Yeah. So, do you is that what you're on to now? You got some things talking about um, how people use? No, I don't. Okay. Um. Also, if they say stuff like your parents treat you wrongly, which we've already like discussed. Well, okay. So let's look at yeah, let's look at some of those tactics. What what are ways that people use to groom young people? Uh, we talked about it a little bit. They they take your side a lot on things. Mm-hmm. They start to one thing they can do is if they see that you have interests in certain things, they can fake an interest in yeah. that, and make it feel like oh, we like the same things. There's we have so much in common, mm-hmm. and start building a relationship based off of what you are interested in in order to to start to build that yeah and they seem like nicer people at first yes Mm -hmm. they seem like nicer people than even the people you already know Mm -hmm. why because they're interested in you Mm -hmm. they want to know about you they want to know about your hobbies your preferences all of the things they're going to build this repertoire of everything you tell them uh and so it just seems like they're selfless and all about you when when really they're look they're compiling things that they can actually use against you yeah um, and that's not saying don't talk about yourself at all to your friends. What I'm saying is be on the lookout for somebody who's just a little bit too interested. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. 
And I think after a while, once they kind of get your trust and everything, then they start to work that separation. They separate mm-hmm. you from your family. They separate you from your friends. They separate, mm-hmm. you know, and they try to turn you against. So it's basically like saying, like, Kylie, they you're, get it to you're all mine, you know, kind of thing, <laughs> you know, and, and, and nobody like else. Like they're can, going to rescue you. Yes. And they then they start to be controlling. That your parents don't trust you. Yeah. And then they start being controlling and trying to control who can have access to you and everything else. And, you know, or then they might, other things that they might do at that I point. I feel in like time. you talk to your other friends more than you talk to me mm. now. What about me? They're starting to feel left out. Yeah, that's a possibility as well. There's all kinds of things like that. They can start to then ask for inappropriate pictures. They can ask for different things like that. Proving to them that you're more theirs than your other friends. Yeah. Back to your, make them think, make you think that your parents don't trust you when in reality they do trust you. They just don't trust strangers. Yeah. Online. (laughs) For good reason. And (laughs) also learn that if your parents want to look at your social media app, let them because they just want to make sure that you are being smart with your social media app decisions, that you're not befriending some kind of stranger that they don't know or that you don't know. Um, Because, again, remember that your parents care about you, and, again, they don't want to lose you. Yeah. So that's the reason why they go to the extent, because parents will do anything for their child. Okay? And the more smart you are on social media, the better you'll be. Yeah. Better off you'll be, that is. And one thing that I want to mention that is not like, I don't know what the word is, but if you feel like you don't have a good relationship with your parents, talk to them about it. Mm. Okay? Because if you feel like they're not really spending time with you, they're too focused on this or they're too focused on that, talk to them about it. And if they're busy, just back away and say, okay. But if they're like watching TV or something and you just want to play a game or something with them and ask, go ahead, just ask. (laughs) Most of the time, if you show an interest in wanting to spend time with your parents, they're going to want to spend time with you. Yeah. And the better relationship that you have with your parents, I think the better off you'll also be. Yeah, I agree with that as well. Sometimes when you already feel disconnected, that makes you more likely to be a target in the first place. You already feel disconnected with your family. Um, Let's say that you just don't have the greatest home life. And sometimes that's the case. If you're listening to this podcast, you probably are okay. But uh, (laughs) not many parents who don't care about their child safety would ask them to listen to this. That's true. Uh, But... You know, let's just say that you don't have the greatest home life and you're not really happy with where you are. Sometimes, we we said that labor trafficking is a thing, mm-hmm. but uh, sometimes it's in the form of somebody saying, you want to get out of the house? Here, have a job, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Um, just, uh, just know those signs too. Yeah. And, and kind of finally, as we were wrapping this up, we're kind of looking at how, how you should respond to trafficking, whether you see things in your own life or whether you see things in the life of friends or other people, or maybe even um, like one story we heard of where there was a, a guy at a gas station. He had learned some of this type stuff, learned some things to look for and everything else. He actually was sitting there getting gas in his car and he heard a couple explaining to a 13 year old girl what she should do in you know, when she goes into the hotel and different things along those lines. And he, he overhears this conversation. He calls 911. They end up getting the couple arrested and, and rescued the girl out of that situation. And all of that came just because he overheard that. So, like, how do we, what do we do in situations like that? What do we, you know, what do we do? Do we jump in there and get involved? That's usually not, you know, not recommended because you could bring on danger to yourself and the victim at that point in time. But so. discreetly track it and call the police. Yeah. 911 for any type of emergency situation. Definitely don't brush it off. No. No. Absolutely. Don't go, eh, hey, we'll be okay. Yeah. Or I'm probably overreacting. Or it's not my business. Follow your gut feeling. There are numbers that you can call if you are 
maybe suspecting of a situation, but maybe it's not a direct emergency in that moment like that one situation was. And I think Kylie has those as well. Yep, it's the Human Trafficking Hotline, which is one 888 Okay. And then text BEFREE, capital B and capital F, and then 233733. Three, three. Well, I think that is... Text be free because if you, you I, I know I know that you don't see this like those like Gentry and I see this, but that's actually like the numbers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see that big difference between our generation and theirs, know, right there? Because you and I cut our eyes at each other. Like, <laughs> wait, that's not. <laughs> so yeah. So if you actually look on a, on a phone, there are number or there are letters at each number. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So it's it's be free. It is two three three seven three three. Yeah. So you're gonna text two three three seven three three, and you'll text a number or, or put your message in there gotcha. to that number. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And in translation to this generation, just say the number one more time. <laughs> okay. Two three three seven three three. <laughs> All right. I think you had some other numbers there the as well. The next you? one was teen dating abuse hotline, which was... And that's if you find yourself in a situation. Yeah. one So again, that is one And then the last one is runaway safe line. Which is one eight hundred seven eight six two nine two nine. Again, that is one eight hundred seven eight six two nine two nine. For that one, you said it's a runaway safe line. So who would be using that one? Who is that one geared towards? <laughs> you looked at me. You're the one who got the numbers. I would think that would work on either way. I'm not really sure on that either. Uh, but I think that was where if you if you maybe suspect that somebody has run away, mm-hmm. um, but also. If you have run away, you know, in a situation, right. you can probably call that. If you've okay. run away and now you find yourself in a very bad situation, you can probably call that number. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing that you can do to help yourself is to stay informed. Yes. Make informed decisions. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and knowledge is the best superpower. Mm-hmm. And at this day and age, knowledge is pretty much free. Yeah. Um. So just be informed, make good decisions. Uh, and when someone tells you that you're not, you, you don't see one of the dangerous sides of something, take the time to listen. Yeah. Um, and actually ask them to explain it to you. Don't just brush it off as a, I try to make good decisions and all of this. They very well may know something that you don't know yet. That's why that's why we put the big emphasis on trusting uh, the authority figures in your life uh, with this kind of information is it's not that we don't think you're intelligent. You could be very, very intelligent, but also uninformed on certain subjects. Oh, yeah. Um, nobody knows everything, but people who have more life experience are more likely to recognize certain signs than you are and recognizing that you haven't been around uh, as long as somebody else has and maybe haven't seen as much is one of the smartest things you can realize. Intelligent people take advice from other people. Yep. I didn't mention today that we have Gentry on the podcast, but yes, we are joined by Gentry again. Yeah. They just know that random voice that sometimes pops in. Yeah. Oh, she must be back. Yeah. (laughs) You're here so often. I forget to say, Oh, Gentry's here. It's fine. (laughs) If your parents are um, setting, you know, social media app guidelines. Follow those guidelines. They are there for a reason. Don't just ignore them, okay? They are there for a reason. They have your best interest at heart, and you shouldn't be able to hide anything from them. Or you shouldn't try to hide anything or from them. you shouldn't try to hide anything from them. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah. All right. So, uh, guys, thank you very much. Please share this along. Uh, we do – it's our goal – we are all very passionate about this subject. It is our goal to see these numbers go down instead of rise. 
and anything that we can do in educating people to help people be safer uh, from grooming and human trafficking, we are, we're going to do our best to do anything we can to help others in that realm. I did happen to think of one thing that we did not mention, mm-hmm. and that is if you are a teen, a child, a teen, and you have a friend that you believe may be being trafficked. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's not you, right? but you're seeing that pattern. Yeah. It is your responsibility yes. to help them to go to an authority figure that's trusted and get help for them. So if, even if you just suspect it, you can help protect your friends. So don't be afraid to do that. Don't yeah. be afraid to, and, and to talk to them as well and be like, hey, maybe this is something that we need to at least take another look yeah. at. And sometimes it can feel like you're trapped, you Mm -hmm. know, like there's nothing really that you can do, or maybe you've already talked to some people about it and it just hasn't been taken seriously. Yeah. The best thing that you can do um, is to keep an eye on the situation. Mm -hmm. Just Mm -hmm. consistently monitor it, consistently be there, set your up, set yourself up as that, as a trusted person. Mm -hmm. um, And keep trying whenever there's an opportunity. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Keep people informed every time you there is a new update. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, because guys. consistency oh. can make someone take you seriously. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. Very true. Okay. Well, guys, thank you very much for listening to this episode. Please share this episode with others that could use this knowledge. We hope that this helps many people. We'll see you in the next one.